Are you feeling lost in the sea of acronyms like NCR, CARS, SCARS, RCA, MOCs, and so on? Are you confused about what they mean or when to use them in your ISO or API management system? In this video, I will explain these terms and show you how understanding them can transform your quality, environmental, safety, or information security management system into a powerhouse of efficiency and improvement. And if you don't use them correctly though, you could create more work for your company and your team. In this video, we're cutting through the confusion and giving you clear answers to questions you've probably asked yourself, like, what do all these acronyms mean? NCR, CAR, MOC, SCAR, CAPA, CIP, and others. How do you incorporate them into your own ISO or API management system in a way that drives real improvements? And how do you promote their use in your company? With my recommendations, you will feel comfortable using these terms and will apply them appropriately in your system. Imagine walking into a room filled with engineers, managers, and auditors, all talking in a language that sounds more like a secret code than English. For example, what is the disposition on the last five NCRs? Did you receive a response on the latest SCAR? Have you conducted RCA on the last SCAR? Is the MOC completed yet? And the worst part is that you are expected to not only keep up, but actually make decisions based on these acronyms. But don't worry, I will explain the specific purpose of each so you will understand and use it as intended. So let's start with understanding these acronyms. Starting with CAR, Corrective Action Request. A CAR focuses on fixing a problem that already occurred. It requires root cause analysis or RCA to prevent recurrence and review of effectiveness to ensure that the problem did not reoccur. In the ISO and API arena, CAR is by far one of the most frequently used terms because most problems require fixing the root cause of the problem so they don't happen again. And as you can see, root cause analysis or RCA is the most important component of a CAR. Although the acronym CAR translates to corrective action request, when companies use these acronyms, they actually use it for the entire life cycle of their CAR rather than just the request portion. So remember that. PAR. PAR stands for Preventive Action Request. Unlike a car, a PAR is about stopping potential problems before they happen. It also promotes the use of root cause analysis to find out the potential causes that could make the problem appear. Unfortunately, the term has fallen out of favor given that ISO removed the requirements for preventive action and API is on its way to do the same, having it removed from their API Q1. For these reasons, I will just bypass any additional reference to PARS. NCR, non-conformance report. NCR track product or service issues that do not meet product or service requirements. Companies track non-conformances using NCRs mainly to keep a log of defects, defect categories, defect types, frequency, count, etc. and to indicate what was done with them, normally called disposition. For example, were they scrapped, were they reworked, were they returned to vendor, or were they used as is, in order to make informed productivity and efficiency decisions. This will ultimately help them when creating Pareto charts or other diagrams where they can spot trends that might help them eliminate such product defects or non-conformances. Although a severe product or service non-conformance 
could result in a corrective action, NCRs are primarily a tracking mechanism to account for any of these issues and to disposition product or services that did not meet requirements. Now let's look at a SCAR. A SCAR stands for Supplier Corrective Action Request. I know when you first hear this, you think of a scar in your face, in your arm, or in your body, but it's not that. SCAR was derived from the need to issue suppliers a corrective action for a problem that was caused by them or their product or service. Calling it a SCAR is a way to differentiate it from a regular internal corrective action or CAR. So a SCAR is a formal request to a supplier that they explain to you how they intend to correct a problem they caused. SCARs hold suppliers accountable and ensures they address the root causes of their problems. Now let's look at RCA, which stands for Root Cause Analysis, and we already look at that when we explain corrective action. Root Cause Analysis is a problem-solving technique that helps you dig deeper than just fixing the immediate issue by identifying the fundamental reason something went wrong. So instead of just putting a bandage on a problem, it is like being a detective who investigates why the problem happened in the first place. So the goal is to find the original source of an issue so you can prevent it from happening. And as we saw earlier, all corrective actions will always have RCA as part of them. Now let's look at CAPA. CAPA stands for Corrective Action, Preventive Action. This is an old term derived from all software that could handle both corrective actions and preventive actions. Because preventive actions are now seldom used, this term has also fallen out of favor, and for this reason we won't talk about them anymore in this video. NCN. NCN stands for Non-Conformity Note. This term was originated by certification bodies or registrars who issue non-conformities as part of the audit findings. NCNs are often confused with NCRs, which is the non-conformance reports. However, as stated before, NCR is used to track product or service non-conformance, while NCN is the acronym for a type of audit finding, specifically non-conformities. Now let's look at MOC. MOC stands for Management of Change. Basically, a change request. A change request, sometimes called a management of change, or MLC, is like asking for permission to make a change in a project or in your management system. Imagine you're building a big structure and you want to change part of the design. Instead of just going and doing it, you tell everyone what you're gonna do, why you want to make the change, and discuss how it may affect the whole project. So this process helps everyone understand what the change is going to be and why it's necessary and how it might impact other parts of the work. It is a way to make sure changes are well thought out safely and don't cause unexpected problems in your ISO or API management system. Finally, let's look at OFIs, opportunities for improvement. When you see the term OFI, it's usually in the context of an audit finding, where they represent opinions made by the auditor on items that are not bad or non-compliant, but that could be done better based on the auditor's experience. In reality, all these acronyms that we just described are related to opportunities to improve. Now that you know what these acronyms mean, let's figure it out the real problem with these acronyms. See, the issue isn't about knowing what these acronyms mean, it's about how 
they are used. Many companies stick to these terms even when they don't fully understand their purpose. For example, NCR is to me one of the most widely misunderstood acronyms. Most people tend to confuse NCR with a corrective action or worse yet with an audit, nonconformity or NCN. Much of the confusion stems from their seeming relation to the word nonconformity. The key thing to remember is that not all product or service nonconformances or NCRs may require root cause analysis, while all corrective actions always require root cause analysis. Therefore, an NCR is not a car, and hence, that's why standards have requirements for each and in separate parts of the standard. Otherwise, they will be together in one requirement, wouldn't it? Another problem I have seen is large companies, you know, the ones up on the top of the food chain who audit their suppliers. When they conduct their audits, sometimes they issue NCRs and demand the supplier to answer the NCRs. This misuse creates confusion, inconsistency, making it harder for organizations because now the supplier is confusing the customer audit NCNs with their own product or service NCRs, causing them to want to conduct root cause analysis on all their NCRs, and thus creating unnecessary work. So, when and how do we use these acronyms? If you think about it, a problem either needs root cause analysis, RCA, or not. So, on this basis, most problems or improvement opportunities can be handled via a car or via simple action items. And a car involves root cause analysis, action items, and review of effectiveness. So how do you use this in real ISO or API life? Let's review these sources of improvements to see how to address them. Actions from a management review usually are just that, simple actions. Audit findings, well, they could be non-conformity, or NCN or observations which can be solved through either car or through simple action items. Change requests or MLC. This is typically just handled through actions so to ensure the change actually happens as needed. Customer complaints, most unlikely these are handled through a car. Lessons learned. While most may be simple actions, it is possible that you will have a lesson learned that actually needs a corrective action or car. Objectives not met. Another one that may be solved through action items, but sometimes it may require a car if the objective is persistently not met. Equipment or tools whose calibration was found out of tolerance. This might be handled through simple actions if it was deemed that the tool, for example, was not even in use, or it may require a full-fledged car or corrective action if the tool was used, product was cheap, and product exists in the warehouse. Product or service non-conformance or NCRs, well, this will definitely be handled both through simple action items if the non-conformance is maybe not critical, such as when a product could be easily reworked, but it may also need a full-fledged car if the non-conformance is severe, it involves a very unhappy customer, it involves costly scrap or rework, or if there were penalties to pay, or if there are trends showing significant growth of the NCR in the wrong direction. Safety incidents. Safety incidents could be recordable or non-recordable. Non-recordable incidents will probably be handled through simple action items. However, recordable incidents will definitely require a car or corrective action. Safety observations or behavioral-based safety items. This should mostly be just observations and therefore, if anything needs to be done, it will probably be just action items. If there's a need for a car, I would 
would imagine that this will no longer be just an observation and rather a safety incident. Significant risk. When conducting a risk assessment, whether an individual risk or an assessment that is part of a larger project, you are assessing potential issues or issues that already happen but that could happen again. In either case, these are not factual problems and therefore conducting an RCA would probably be an overkill. Simple action items should help mitigate or lower the risk value. Supplier issue or a scar. If you have reached a point where the supplier needs to submit a formal car response to you, then it requires RCA and action items on their part and review of effectiveness on yours. Now that you have mastered the mystery behind these acronyms NCR, CAR, SCAR, MOCs, RCA, etc., you can see that it's all about how to improve, which is the essence of all ISO or API management system standards, whether it is quality, environmental, occupational health and safety, or information security. Understanding this will help you do a better job and ensure others follow. Employees, for example, should not feel intimidated by these acronyms. They simply need to log their ideas or issues in the appropriate software or form, and everything becomes a source of improvement handled through either actions or corrective actions. Your own leadership management should have a clear picture also of these issues across your company, helping them see whether these issues have been completed or not. And auditors will see that you have a streamlined and organized system that demonstrates your commitment to continual improvement. And if you have the right tools, then you're one step closer to having a management system that is in a continual state of improvement and that truly helps your business.